Greetings, my friends. It is I, Kolar the Unkilled. And in this video, I am going to show off some key points of interest for TPOS 2. Just some of those little things that the mod adds, which makes Skyrim feel that much more complete. We are starting out here in the White Run Hold, the Tundra area. And as you can see, Gyukar's monument, seen off here in the distance, is no longer the only one of its kind. This type of monument, along with ancient Nordic ruins, are dotted throughout the tundra. Relics of the past, left over from the Merithic era, pre-Empire, pre-Slave Queen Alessia. This video has been a long time coming, my friends. I have been enjoying TPOS 2 for quite some time now, and I imagine there are still things added by this mod that I have yet to discover. But as you can see here, the White Run Tundra was once a bustle with activity uh, by the ancient Nords. Perhaps dragon cultists? But not necessarily. I'll show you where I am on the map. Right about here, um, just more than midway between White Run and Rorikstead. And here is a particular landmark that is where I'm headed to next. designated simply as the 13th Legion. We shall see it momentarily. There we go. Let's get a higher vantage. So it is virtually adjacent to Sleeping Tree Camp. Off in the distance there is another TPOS 2 point of interest one I'll be showing later. Uh, but for now, for now we're going to look at the the base camp of the 13th Legion. Let's have a look. They appear to be under attack. Ah, uh, yes, there they are. So Stormcloaks spawn in from time to time, not every time. You know, the strange thing is, I have already completed the Skyrim Civil War quest line. So, it's a bit puzzling to me that the Stormcloaks would continue to spawn in even after they have been defeated. Come on, Stinbar, defend yourself. He got knocked on his ass. And there are some more wild, savage denizens of the White Run Plains out here attacking these soldiers. Let's just help them out, shall we? Uh-oh, there's a lot of them. Oh, sorry, Stinvar. And they are savage bears. By that, I mean they are affected by the mod Sad Savage Skyrim. It makes them uh, quite a bit more dangerous, but with the help of the soldiers, we prevailed. Now, my friends, let us take a look, a more detailed look, at the 13th Legion base camp here. Now, I haven't spoken to Nesbit directly um, regarding what exactly the purpose of this is, and I, I believe it's just... I think it's just here for immersion purposes. I don't believe it serves an actual function because, like I said, I completed the Civil War quest line and yet it's still being raided by Stormcloaks. Um, but I also would like to ask, regarding the 13th Legion, is that is that a reference to the 13th Legion from the HBO series Rome, 
which happens to be one of my all-time favorite shows. If you have not seen Rome, my friends, and you enjoy Roman history or the Roman Empire in general, you must watch the show. It is excellent. Uh, particularly its content regarding the 13th Legion. 13! Anyway, it may have nothing whatsoever to do with that, and it may be all coincidence. But, my friends, there now, as you can see, is a large Imperial base camp set up in the middle of the Whiterun Tundra. Part of the point of this video is just to illustrate, basically, you know, why I would be so loath to go back to vanilla Skyrim after having TPOS installed and discovering all these little things it adds to the world. People do frequently ask me, what is exactly, what is TPOS 2? And my answer is, well, it's, it's a large overhaul type mod. It affects the entire world of Skyrim. It adds content to some dungeons. Dungeon content typically takes the form of devious yet deadly traps. And that is one of the things I miss from Oblivion, my friends. If you recall playing Oblivion, if you set off the traps in the dungeons of Oblivion, you oftentimes were killed in the process. It was fatal. And so TPOS 2 does bring some of that back. But also, there's so many other things that it adds to find. Let's take a look at some more, shall we? And now, my friends, I'm traveling in the dark because this next landmark, I believe I initially discovered at night. And what a discovery it was. Have a look at this, my friends. Let's see. How well can you see it? Is the screen too dark? Let's check it out in the daytime, shall we? Yeah, let's get a little bit more light. Or some light rain, it matters not. So, my friends, not only on the White Run Tundra do we have a myriad ancient Nord ruins, we also have equally as ancient, if not more so, probably more so actually, ruins from the age of the ancient snow elves, which used to be ubiquitous throughout Skyrim. So this is this is a monument, uh, an idol of some kind. And I know he represents one of the long lost snow elves. I do not, my lore may be a bit off here because I do not know if this represents one specific or particular figure in, uh, in Falmer history. Uh, you know, the Snow Elves, when I say Falmer, I don't mean those those wretched things you find below ground. Um, the Snow Elves themselves became those. So, you know, before they used to look like this, and they were a majestic people. And this is one of the only remaining monuments to their existence. And let me show you where I am on the map. So I had to place a marker just so that I could remember where to go to get to it. But um, I have Granite Hill installed. That's a mod by John Rose. You might not have this in your game, but we have Fort Sunguard. And, well, it would appear that Gukar's monument points directly south to where this Snow Elf monument is. And there you have it, my friends. It's not a well-traveled location. I discovered it purely by chance. And it's this sort of thing which makes me wonder just how many more ruins and such sites there are that I have yet to discover. 
Not every bridge in Skyrim has been rendered unique, but many of them have. Two of my favorite examples are right here at the crossroads of Whiterun, near the Hunting Brew Meadery. This, <laughs> this particular bridge I find uh, just simply spectacular, with the detail and the snake-backed bridge here actually has its own map marker. Another rather ubiquitous feature of TPOS2, near major cities aligned with the Empire, are the prisoner cages uh, from which hang Stormcloak prisoners. So there you go, my friends. Just a little bit more atmosphere and uh, immersion when it comes to the Skyrim Civil War. And here we have yet another unique bridge by Half Moon Mill. And along with this, we have the Stable Outpost, which this is actually a functioning general store. And here is one of the many wandering NPCs added by TPOS2. His arrival here at this time is coincidence, but I'm glad he's here because this just illustrates another point that I was going to make. The world itself just seems more true and more lived in when you have more uniquely named individuals wandering about the land. And so that's, that's part of what the mod does. It adds them in as well as their associated living quarters, such as what we have here. And this, if I recall, is a Dawn Guard. Yes, a Dawn Guard outpost. And so as you traverse Skyrim's various roads, you actually find many of these NPCs, including Dawnguard faction warriors, wandering about the land in search of recruits and in search of vampires. So this is what everyone really wants to see right here. This, this immensely tall tower I am looking at it um, from the vantage near Half Moon Mill. So what exactly is this tower, my friends? Well, the entrance to this can be found right here in this submerged Dwemer structure. So I'm going to swim there. I'm going to unlock it. Actually, you don't unlock it. You just open the door. There's no lock. And I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so here we are. This is where that submerged structure brings you. And this is the tower. So yes, it is a Dwemer structure. Let us, let us take a look on the inside. And there are some things on the outside to see. Um, as you can tell, it is uh, basically it's a, it's a very large player home. You have all of these standard amenities for crafting Make your way up to the top. And the entrance is here, my friends. We also have uh, spots for safe storage and for eating with a terrific view of the tundra there. Look at that. Wow. What do we have here? I see there's okay so there's more than one way to get in pick the lock to obtain the key now I wonder is that entrance the same as this entrance? Apologies for not knowing ahead of time. Um, oh, I see. We'll go in here first. The Tower of Zeneca discovered. My friends, we are now at the very top of the tower. Talk about good views. There really is no better view in Skyrim if your logs can hold up to such a high vantage. And as we look 
Over yonder, there we see another such tower as this. And can you see it? From your vantage, this, right where my crosshairs are, is actually High Hrothgar. Uh, good view, a decent view of that from here. Very well. An amazing vantage. It renders somewhat obvious the limitations of the console when it comes to generating far-off level of detail. Uh, but never mind that, it is still... It is still pretty spectacular, is it not? Now let us make our way into the tower itself. So here we are on the interior of Zeneca Tower, and as I alluded to, it is a large player home. Stocked full of mannequins and storage and displays for your weapons. Now, as you notice, when I open these up, it prompts for um, to activate the dagger rack. So when you place a dagger in these, it's placed exactly in the center. It's not like on Hearthfire, where you have to manually fiddle with it for five minutes, attempting to get it right. And as we move on down the passageway, there is more to be seen. There's a very large forge area stocked full of ingots. These weapon racks work the same way, by the way. It places your weapon neatly in the center. And here is our... Well, we've got more displays for weapons, which I am all about. And here are... Here is your surplus of ingots, my friends. That will certainly get you started crafting whatever armor or weapons you desire. And over here we have a kitchen and an area for sleeping as well. Now, if the lighting looks a little bit off to you, my friends, that is, well, the reasons are twofold. It's, number one, it's my own personal display, my display enhancements settings, making things look a bit gaudy. Also, I'm using ELE as my interior lighting mod, and TPOS 2 really has not been properly optimized for ELE, so some of the interiors may look a bit off or they may flicker. Worry not. If you use the much more popular interior lighting mods like RLO or ELFX, there are patches available so that when you come into places like this, it's going to look quite outstanding. I also use the Window Shadows uh, interior lighting mod, and I can see that in action here with this... Uh, with this Dwemer light casting its shadows upon the wall. So it actually looks it looks pretty good. And there you have it, my friends. That is the interior of Zeneca Tower. It is a massively tall player home. Now you know what that is. <laughs> Look at this poor fool. He can barely get up the stairs. Come on, Puck. Hey, we're trying to get in here. Look at this guy. <laughs> one of my one of my personal favorite TPOS2 additions, my friends. You actually have stumbling and staggering drunkards uh, in many of the villages and settlements. Not all of them, or perhaps so, and I just haven't seen them yet. But there you go. <laughs> there you go, my friends. And the interiors of every inn has been modified. Let's take a look. So this is the Villamir Inn, as you have never seen it before, unless you've been running TPOS 2, like myself. Every inn in Skyrim has been redone on the interior to reflect a unique atmosphere. A unique layout. And such is the case here with various hanging tapestries. Even some suits of armor up there. It is a bit dark in here. That is because of my interior lighting mod. Uh, ELE makes interiors rather dark. That is not TPOS 2 at work. 
just so you know. But all of these rooms have uh, custom assets in the forms of paintings on the wall. Something else I miss from Oblivion. And there you have it, my friends. Just a brief look inside the Villamere Inn. Like I said, every single inn interior is redone uh, to reflect a unique atmosphere and layout. Okay, so after staying overnight within the Villamere, let us take a look outside at Iverstead proper because it has been upgraded to a great degree and is one of my favorite spots in the new TPOS2 Skyrim. So unlike before, Iverstead is now... It's now a real village. Instead of there just being a handful of buildings and structures, which make the thing barely a settlement, look at the way Iverstead has been built up. Need a ride? Good day. It now has its own carriage, its own new, unique, named NPCs, such as Organ the Crow here. Who knows what that guy's background is. We have a jar full of hearts. But yes, now, take a look at the additions to Iverstead. You know, there used to be absolutely nothing over here. But this is simply uh, where the village has split off. And you have unique structures, all named, with named NPCs, so that it feels real, it feels lived in, it feels established. Perhaps there's a uh, strong Thieves' Guild contingent here based on the outfits of those walking around. We have Dragon's Breath, which is a named player home. Simply pick the lock to the safe. It's not hard to do. Get the key, open the door, and the place is yours. But you know what? I'm not going to spoil that. I'm going to let you look at that on your own, my friends. I do not want to spoil everything about TPOS2. I just don't believe in that. I want you to explore on your own. And there's a little bit more to see here. So let's cross the bridge. And there we have a butcher shack over there. We have an elk that's about to attack me. Oh, come on. Oh. A great elk, nonetheless. That doesn't usually happen, my friends. That is because I have Savage Skyrim installed. Yes, with Savage Skyrim, if you so much as bump into an elk, he becomes your enemy and challenges you to a fight to the death. They're actually quite tough, too, so don't take them lightly. But this is it, my friends. We have a little cattle farm area over here. And welcome to the new Iverstead. Good day, Jared. The stout drinker is a friend of mine. And, my friends, similar to Iverstead, Riften also has its own exterior additions. So, I want to point out, in case you're wondering, everything I'm showing here is from the base TPOS 2 mod. There are add-ons, there are modular add-ons, a handful of them, that you can use along with TPOS 2, but none of that is being featured here. Everything I show, you get with the base TPOS 2 mod, such as all of this. The House of the Voice is a player home, similar to the one found in Iverstead. You pick the lock, open the door, and it is yours. And my friends, behold the exterior 
additions to Riften. Is this not outstanding or what? Every NPC has a name, as opposed to other mods which simply label them as Traveler or Citizen. These are, they're like real people. Gordar the Windcaller. Imagine what kind of background that individual must have to have earned that particular name. <laughs> Maybe none at all, but you know, when you roleplay, your imagination is the key, right? So let's take a look at some of the custom assets that we have out here on this ship. Such as... These are some sort of spinning uh, uh, looms of, of some sort. And we've got some rocking horses. And these do appear elsewhere in the mod, uh, typically inside of inns. The detail is astounding on this. No, you can't, you can't steal it, and you cannot rock yourself upon it. But they're there. They're there for immersion purposes. It is the little things, my friends, added by this mod, which makes it so special. And I understand if, if uh, you're watching this, if you're somebody who has watched all of my prior videos and Let's Plays, you've seen all of this before. But let's face it, Let's Plays are not for everyone. Most people aren't interested in watching somebody else play a game. And that's why I'm featuring these things here uh, as more of a showcase style of... Uh, more of a showcase style of... What am I trying to say here? Alliteration? No, that's not the word. I don't know. I'm at a loss for words. Anyway, uh, my friends... This is the addition to uh, Riften, and other cities feature additions as well. Uh, Windhelm. Windhelm also has significant exterior additions. Not Solitude, not Whiterun, because they have their own modular um, pieces that can be added separately. The final addition that I wanted to call attention to on this episode, my friends is the addition of bandit camps throughout Skyrim. But they aren't just any bandit camps. Some of you may recognize this particular location. And this just happens to be my favorite added bandit camp in the game. The bandits are named. And this particular camp, they're named with a Highlander theme, uh, such as Highlander, I believe, is one of the bandits. Also, Kurgan is over there. So, that's pretty much it, my friends. I wanted to call attention to this. And not everyone is into watching Let's Plays and gameplay like I alluded to before. So, to finish off this video, I am going to attempt to storm this bandit camp on legendary difficulty... And before I do so, my friends, I want to say that I remain Kolar the Unkilled, and I thank you for watching. I'll see you next time around. Stop now if you wish, otherwise, let's just see, let's just see how this goes. If I can avoid the savage Skyrim bears on the way, my, by the gods... I believe I saw a Spriggan over here as well, which is the last thing I need. Come on, my friends. I do hope my followers, yes, my followers are with me. Let's go. Uh-oh, there's Highlander.
friends. I am, I believe I'm level 54. If that gives you an idea, these, ah, these bandits are all, oop, great. Oh, great. I'm stuck down here. Ah. Great. Not what I had intended. Ah, there we go. I'm getting just a little bit of frame loss here. I'm not surprised. I just did it again. I just fell down there again. Ah. If anybody was watching at this point, I'm sure I've lost all of my viewers by now. This bandit is not named. You're just a regular bandit marauder. Don't waste my time. Oh. You too. You look like a Nuriel. <laughs> Go away, Kurgan. Need to go over here. How'd you get back up here? Very well. Me and you, one on one. The way it should be. Are you a vampire? Don't you fall off of there. Don't you? No! Damn fool. Well, well, I've done it. This camp is now mine. If we open this, we find lots of loot. Observe. Diamonds, emeralds, garnets. Of course, you can't sell those unless you know a fence. Which, at this point in time, I do not. Well, my friends, if you're still watching, I thank you. It, it, like I said, this is just one of the many such bandit camps added throughout Skyrim. They're not all like this, with bridges and such. There's actually one that I discovered that, in appearance, is even more fantastic than this one. I can't even recall in my mind where it's located, but if I should happen to find it... I might, I might just show that on one of these episodes that I'm doing as an expose of TPOS 2. And I might not, because as I said before, ah, McLeod, there can be only one! Anyway, as I said before, I only want to show so much. I don't want to spoil everything for you, my friends. Alright, this is how we're closing out the video. Kolar versus McLeod. A fight for the ages. Is your name Connor or Duncan? Whatever it is, I'm going to take your head. 
Get up. Get up so I can take your head. Okay, maybe not. I didn't get the kill cam. Does he have any named gear? He's got Skyforge Steel. He's got Improved Plate, but that is, of course, the Armor Variance mod. I'm... Oh well, I'll over-encumber myself. Here, give me the cloak. Never have too many cloaks. Ah. Ow, I am about to die. Retreat! Retreat and regroup! Uh, oh no! Oh, difficulty is good, is it not? Kill this... Kill this wretched thing! Before it does us all in. I got the kill cam on the Spriggan, but not on the Cloud. <laughs> Very well, my friends. If you're still watching, I thank you once more for watching. And I remain Kolar the Unkilled, and I'll see you next time around, possibly in the next installment of this series. <laughs>